Hello and welcome, it's time for a new YouTube video here on this channel. Today we are diving into object-based note-taking. I have done a short video about this before, uh, but things have changed a little bit, the applications have changed a little bit, and I did a podcast episode about object-based note-taking, I think it's yesterday. Uh, but in today's video we are going over what object-based note-taking is, uh, we are going over the three different applications and the differences between them uh, and like the applications are on in a different stage so for example any type is still in beta so it isn't as fully functional as the two others and I feel like they are going in three separate directions but uh, and that is why I'm not going to rank them and tell you which one is best because I think that is highly personal especially in something uh, like this but let's start off with object-based note-taking. What is object-based note-taking? Simply put object-based note-taking is uh, a form of note-taking where uh, the things you write down are objects uh, and it might it might not make sense it will probably make more sense when i show it to you in the different applications but basically a book note um if you're taking a note on a book you've read you tag that uh, book or you create the object type book and everything that is a book you put into that uh, the same goes for articles the same goes for social media ideas tasks and you can actually do a lot of things what is different between uh, these applications and just for example adding tags in something like obsidian or logsec is that uh, in these object-based note-taking apps, everything revolves around the objects. For example, creating templates actually revolves around the different objects uh, you use. So uh, these objects are really, really important for the whole app experience. And a lot of people, me included, really like this approach because it makes a lot of sense to them. It feels like it is like much easier to organize things to find the different things later and especially when it comes to searching for things um, it is much easier to search based on objects it is at least what I found that the organization feels much easier and keeping your note-taking app organized uh, feels much easier. On the other hand, uh, there is a huge learning curve to actually all three of these applications. And uh, the last time I made a video about this, I talked about uh, how, um, or I talked about the t fourth one, uh, Craft, which was trying to become an object-based note-taking app, but they abandoned uh, it and just did collections instead and task management. And I think one of the reasons is that it is just really hard to learn object-based note-taking. Uh, it took me a while and one of the major issues I had was when I first learned it in any type, a lot of the things I learned in any type I could actually not bring with me to Tana or to capacities, so I had to learn Tana all over again, and I've actually never learned capacities. Uh, but that basically explains the whole idea of object-based note-taking. Now we can dive into the first application, which is AnyType, and AnyType is the most privacy-focused one of these applications. So um, the way this application works is that it is sort of like Notion with the databases. You have two types, um, also with the way it looks, but you have two types of databases. You have one called sets and you have one uh, called collections. Collections are basically multiple different object types, while um, uh, while uh, a set is one type of object. Here you can see all of the different objects. So if I open up my objects, you can see all of the ones I've created. And you can also create relations, which are basically how these different objects are related together. Uh, this is still an application that is in an early stage and it isn't like I found that everything doesn't work every time I want it to, but um, it is a really cool application with a really beautiful task view here, you, uh, sorry, graph view. Here you can see how things are connected together. So for example, I can see how everything is connected together. So this was my clothing brand. I haven't updated this in a while, but this was my clothing brand. And here I am the founder of that clothing brand. I'm also the 
author of this personal note right here which is then connected to my resources so when you look at it this way it makes a lot of sense uh, and i am a space member or a person i actually have other persons inside of here i have one set called apps and everything inside of here is the app object type uh, i am showing you this because i will show you some of something close to this in another video i think about tana uh, but the point is uh, anyways that uh, this is like this is based on the app type so every time i create a new app i use or create a new note about an app i use the app type and it might sound complex but if you get into it it actually makes a lot of sense and so this is the application that is most privacy focused and i would say this feels like a blend between something like notion and something like uh, obsidian uh, this is highly uh, privacy focused uh, you have uh, you actually have the ability to do um, shared uh, spaces so shared workspaces but uh, everything is encrypted you have your own encryption key uh, if you lose that you have a problem because you you will lose uh, the access to your workspace uh, but all of the files are stored locally on your device so if that is really important to you then any type is probably your choice but any type is also still in uh, beta and i think i'm on version 0 0.43 so there is still a lot of work that needs to be done here there are still bugs within the application uh, like I can't, when I click this graph, it actually goes to my tasks instead of my graph. If I jump home and then I click it again, it actually goes where it is supposed to. Uh, so that is just one of the issues here uh, inside of this application. There are bugs, so keep that in mind. The next one we are going to talk about is capacities. I'm not going to talk too much about this because it still doesn't make sense to me, but basically here you have a daily note. I really like daily notes. Uh, this, I think this was the last time I did a video about uh, capacities, but here you can actually link projects and link meetings to this day. Um, and you can go ahead and you can capture things in here. I can drag things around block based just like any type. I actually think all of the applications are block based. Uh, you have backslash functionality here. Um, and the main reason why I really like this is that I feel like this is the most like beautifully designed uh, applications out of the three. This is the one I like to look at the most basically. Uh, so here you have your objects types on the left side. Uh, you can add a new object type from up here in capacities. You can also pin things so I can pin content uh, up there. Um, I can add new content from right here. So here if I press new content I have to choose an object type and here we have a few. So PDF, tweet, image, page table tag person meeting outfit i actually created this one myself book project personal social media which i spelled wrong so you know that this is one of my videos whenever something is spelled wrong but basically uh, this is in my opinion the most like notion like i really like the way it works it also has databases but the databases work uh, a little differently so i have them right here this is my database uh, I have two different ones with two different views uh, from the personal social media one. I can add filters, I can add sorting here, I can change the way it looks, so wall, gallery, or the table view. I can see uh, and add different properties from right here. There is also AI with this application that you can pay for. The application has an extensive free plan, uh, so um, you don't actually have to pay for uh, the application but if you want things like more file uploads ai things like that you will have to pay for this application uh, and the payment is like the um uh, the cost is a little hard to say because uh, they run regional pricing so my pricing comes in norwegian kroners which might be different from which probably is different from you i will leave a link to the pricing page down below so you can uh, check that out for yourself
I will do that for the other applications as well. Uh, the last application is Tana. Tana is different because Tana is an outliner, basically meaning you have bullet notes. Uh, so I have bullet notes right here, which I can nest. Uh, so I can have a bullet note live underneath another bullet note. I can actually nest these forever, I think. Uh, so this is an outliner application. But what makes these uh, this application really cool is that I can easily add a super tag. So let's say this was, this was an app. Let's just say it was an app. Uh, you can do that and you can click on here and you can actually go in and you can see your different apps. So here you can see all of my apps. I have type of apps here. I can add new fields and this is basically based on uh, this uh, super tag. So every time I tag something with, for example, app with the object type, it gets put into this database right here. I can also get this database uh, by doing a search query, either by doing it like this, or um, you can also do it if I am able to close this. Uh, you can also do it by just doing backslash search node. Let's try one more time. So backslash and then search node and I can do app and here I get a list of my app and from here I can actually change it to a table. I can also view the search query and see the query editor. Uh, I can also add filters to this. So let's say I wanted to add a filter for only note taking apps. If I go into type of app and only note taking apps, it will only show me my note taking apps. So basically that's how Tana works. And this is just a quick intro to all of these applications. What I really like about Tana is, um, is that it is, uh, it is highly focused on AI, and I would say that this is more tailored towards busy professionals, uh, people who uh, don't want to spend a lot of time organizing their notes, uh, not necessarily for people in the PKM space, even though it is really loved in the PKM space as well. But this is highly tailored towards people who want to use a lot of AI and uh, have AI help them a lot. That is what they are trying to sell. It doesn't have an offline mode, which might be an issue for a lot of people. Any type and capacities does have that. Uh, but that is something they are saying that they're currently working on. Tana has three different pricing. So they have the free plan, which gives you up to 20,000 nodes. So 20,000 nodes, uh, you get up to 0 0.5 gigs of file storage. You get published pages and two workspaces. On the uh, plus plan, you of course get unlimited uh, custom super tags, unlimited nodes, unlimited shared workspaces. 50 gigs of file storage with an add-on for more, 5 uh, gigs of file size upload. Uh, you also get Google Calendar Sync and a meeting agent, which you can bring with you to your meetings to take the notes for you. Uh, and the last thing you are uh, getting is, or not the last thing, but the last important thing you're getting is AI chat with your content. They also have a pro plan, which is $14 each month, which I'm I'm not able to purchase. I've tried. I'm not able to purchase it. Uh, but with that, you get readwise integration, input API access, unlimited file storage, and unlimited file size uploads. The last two is uh, the main reason for why I am considering uh, that plan. Um, but I. Uh, I've tested out all of these applications. As I said, Capacities is the one I haven't fully understood yet, but I do really like how beautiful it looks. Uh, and for a lot of people that are like not really that into note taking, I've seen like students, for example, often tend uh, to use Capacities. A lot of content creators as well tend to use uh, Capacities. Um, I'm not sure why, but uh, they do, uh, and it is worth taking a look at if you uh, want something uh, that looks really like Notion. Any type also looks like Notion, but there isn't a web version, for example, and you have an encryption key, which might be a lot to people. But uh, that basically covers it. I am really excited about object-based note-taking, mainly because this is the most 
exciting uh, thing in uh, note-taking and personal knowledge management right now. So there will be more videos on these three applications later. But that covers it for today's video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so, so much for watching today's video.